Most people have heard dozens of Hank Cochran songs, but they have no clue who he is. Over many decades, Hank was Nashville's biggest secret weapon. He wrote some of the biggest and most beloved songs in country music history. I Fall to Pieces by Patsy Cline, The Chair by George Strait, Don't Touch Me by Jeannie Seeley. Did you write Don't Touch Me, especially for Jeannie Seeley? Yes. It's probably the only song you wrote just for one person. And so, so many more. But was Hank really the happy-go-lucky, behind-the-scenes workhorse he seems to be? Or are things a bit more complicated than that? Today we're looking at the secret history of Hank Cochran, the music industry's most well-kept secret. So what shocking musicians did Hank secretly make famous? What legendary songs did he secretly write? And was Hank manipulated by the music biz? We're gonna find out the dark truth behind his five marriages, why he's secretly partially responsible for the Beatles, and why he nearly quit music for good. Before we begin, hit that thumbs up icon to show our channel some support. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any country content like this. Now come on and let's go find out. Rough Beginnings Now Hank Cochran was born in Isola, Mississippi, a town with a population of less than 600, and without more than a couple bucks to go around the entire town. Oh yeah, and it was smack dab in the middle of the Great Depression, when the average annual income fell to 117 bucks a year. That's the world Hank grew up in, with poverty and despair all around him. When Hank was nine, his parents split up. His father took him along for a bit before dumping him in an orphanage. So Hank ran away twice and was eventually sent to live with his grandfather. But he didn't stay there long either. He and his uncle hitchhiked to New Mexico to work in the oil fields. What would you do there? I started working in the oil fields. I mean, I was about 12. And his uncle taught Hank how to play guitar on that trip. It was in New Mexico that people told him, once you get oil in your hair, you'll never get away. But Hank wasn't so sure about that. Could music possibly be his ticket out of poverty and back-breaking work? So Hank made a choice. He went to California to still work hard labor, but in another field. But he wasn't just there for the olives and the sunshine. Hank had a mission. He would become a musician, even if it killed him. But California wasn't about to let him have it all for free. California Dreamin'. It was in California that Hank tried to rebuild himself for the first time. And it was there that he became involved in a story that would end with the creation of the Beatles and a horrible death that would forever change him. In California, Hank met a gorgeous young woman named Shirley Foster. They got married and had a few kids, but Hank had anything but a stable family life in mind. He met a guy named Eddie Cochran, a cocky kid who was only 17 and had just dropped out of high school. They weren't related, but they couldn't let the coincidence of their names go to waste. So they formed a group called the Cochran Brothers. And these counterfeit bros built up a reputation for putting on a rocking show. But that didn't translate to mainstream success. Within a year, Eddie decided to split off and try his hand at a solo career. And almost immediately, Eddie blew up. He abandoned country music and styled himself as a rebellious rocker. In 1956, he put out the hit 20 Flight Rock, which was especially popular in Europe. And when Paul McCartney auditioned for the band that would become the Beatles, he played 20 Flight Rock to impress John Lennon. Next, Eddie followed that up with an even bigger hit, Summertime Blues. Eddie Cochran was on track to become the next huge thing, until tragedy struck. It was 1960 when Eddie Cochran died in England due to a high-speed taxi crash. Hank, back home in America, was crushed. I heard it, I heard it on the radio. Yeah. Eddie got killed on the way to the airport in England. Yeah. Man, it's really hard. And he saw all too clearly where the intense life of a musician could lead. 
On the home front, his marriage was crumbling, and he couldn't balance the life of a family man with the life of a traveling musician. So Hank had a choice. He could quit music forever and lead a decent life as a family man, or he could risk it all and start again. Hank Cochran made a decision, and he said goodbye to his family and headed to Nashville. Hello, Nashville. Many new arrivals in Nashville spend years selling boots or flipping burgers before getting any success in the music business. Working at McDonald's for 10 years is basically in the job description of a country musician. But was Hank Cochran talented enough to skip the line? Could a kid who couldn't hack it in California make it in the music city? So Hank quickly got a job as a songwriter and a song plugger. Now a song plugger works behind the scenes, pitching new material to musicians and band leaders. Sure, it's not exactly a headlining gig, but Hank did the best he could with what he had. But how good was his best? Well, sit down, why don't ya? Because in 1960, his first year in Nashville, Hank co-wrote a song called I Fall to Pieces. A singer named Patsy Cline picked it up and it became a number one hit. Seriously, one of the greatest songs of all time. That same year, he wrote a tune called Make the World Go Away. Now this one wasn't a hit until a few years later, when Eddie Arnold put out a version that would reach number one. In fact, it seemed that just about everything Hank touched shot up the charts to, you guessed it, number one. It was around this time that Hank discovered a young performer by the name of Willie Nelson. Super impressed, he helped get Willie a job at his company. Later, Willie complained that he couldn't feed his family on the paltry salary he was getting, so Hank went and pushed for Willie to get a raise. But when the company balked, Hank said they could take his fees out of his salary. What a guy. Hank and Willie would be thick as thieves in the coming years. So let's face it, it seemed that Hank had a gift in helping other people become famous. I mean, just about everything he touched became gold, except of course for his own music. I mean, what was the point? Was it even worth it to keep chugging along? Love Troubles Next up, Hank would discover yet another young talent who would match and then surpass his own fame. But was he stabbed in the back or was it all his fault? Let's find out. Okay, so Hank was continuing to develop a reputation as one of the most surefire songwriters in Nashville. But in the meantime, he was looking for love. During a trip to California, he discovered a young singer who went by Jeannie Seely. Impressed, he encouraged her to move to Nashville. She took his advice and showed up with $50 to her name. When they met again in the Music City, she asked if he still wanted to work with her, and he said yes but only if he got to make all of the decisions. Hank wrote her songs, made the business decisions, and controlled her entire career. Her second album was even called Thanks Hank. He really did take over her entire career and she trusted him completely, but it wasn't just a professional collaboration. They would end up getting married. While the music business kind of torpedoed Hank's earlier marriages, it seemed that shacking up with another musician might work out. It's hard to say that Hank gave her bad advice because Jeannie became a pretty big star. She won a Grammy for her fiery tune, Don't Touch Me. She acted alongside Dolly Parton in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas and became the first woman to host at the Grand Ole Opry. She would eventually host the famous show over 5,000 times. But Jeannie would reach all of those heights without Hank by her side. The two split up after 12 years of marriage. It was yet another case of Hank helping somebody else become famous without him. So was he doomed to live his entire life on the sidelines? The right decision. Hank Cochran continued to perform throughout his entire career. He did have a minor hit with the tune Sally Was a Good Old Girl, but I don't think he ever achieved the solo career he once dreamed of. Although his songwriting continued to be unstoppable. Just how consistent was he? Almost every year of his career, he put out a classic song. In fact, over 30 years, he wrote 29 top 10 hits. Let's face it, if Hank Cochran was a baseball player, he'd be Barry Bonds. 
hitting it out of the park more consistently than anybody else. And to my knowledge, Hank Cochran did it without steroids. Now, Mr. Cochran eventually learned how to settle down. In 1982, he met a woman named Susie. It wasn't an ideal situation for a musician. She already had kids. And Susie's daughter in particular hated his guts. I hated him. Um, he completely came in and kind of railroaded my life. But Hank took that in stride and promised the girl that no matter what she thought about him, he would still be there for her. And don't worry, she did end up seeing him as a father figure. Hank and Susie remained married until the day he died. July 15th, 2010, Hank Cochran passed away from pancreatic cancer. But the man, the musician, the songwriter, was mourned by millions across the globe who had been touched by his songs. I think maybe it's not such a bad thing to just get famous for writing songs. Sure, you don't get the paparazzi, the red carpets, the hotel room parties, but you sure do get something else because there's one group of people who idolize Hank, the musicians who play his songs. While general audiences might not know his name, anybody in the country music game would certainly recognize how important Hank Cochran was. Sometimes in life, you don't get what you want, but you get what you need. All right, I'm opening the floor to you. What do you think? Do you think Hank was due to have more hits of his own? Or is it better to just work quietly behind the scenes? What's your favorite song that Hank sung? What's your favorite song that Hank wrote? Get in the comments and tell us all things Hank Cochran. If you enjoyed our deep dive today, please hit that thumbs up icon to show your support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened. What happened?